Sandra Stotsky has been touring the country criticizing the Common Core state standards. We attended one of her stops in Missouri and were disappointed to see that most of the presentation was misleading and much of the information was flat out false. Although Dr. Stotsky herself admitted repeatedly that she is, quote, not an expert in math, unquote, this lack of expertise did not prevent her from spending the majority of the time on issues related to mathematics education and even handing out documents containing false information. These documents came from Stotsky's friend, James Milgram, a Stanford mathematician who, as we will show, knows a lot about theoretical mathematics, but doesn't know much at all about how children learn math or how it can be effectively taught. Given the misinformation, we want to set a portion of the record straight. Unfortunately, we can't fact check everything because, to paraphrase Dr. Bill McCallum, their presentation was incorrect on so many points that it's not so much a matter of fact checking as checking to see if there are any facts. Here are some of Stotsky's false criticisms of the Common Core standards for elementary mathematics. Common Core does not require proficiency with addition and subtraction until grade 4. That's wrong. And not only does Common Core require proficiency, but it also expects students to explain why addition and subtraction strategies work. And this understanding deepens learning and it prepares future learning. Common Core excludes fluent conversion between different forms of fractions, regular fractions, decimals, and percents. Wrong again. And not only does it require conversion, but it also explicitly states that Grade 7 students develop a unified understanding of number, recognizing fractions, decimals, and percents as different representations. Common Core fails to teach prime factorization. Consequently, it does not include teaching about least common denominators or greatest common factors. Wrong. Page 42, you can see right there, find the greatest common factor and least common multiple of two whole numbers. So all these alleged criticisms are demonstrably false. And even if they weren't, they still wouldn't be valid critiques of Common Core because Common Core only establishes minimum standards. States, school districts, and teachers all have the freedom to teach things earlier or to teach more than what's included in Common Core. There was a contradiction that seemed to go unnoticed by Dr. Stotsky and the Common Core critics. They not only argued that the Common Core elementary math standards were too relaxed compared to international competitors, but also that they were too challenging because they were beyond the developmental capabilities of young children. Although it's true that children's development should be taken into account when thinking about grade level expectations, the Common Core critics are wrong to say that elementary students are incapable of developing conceptual understanding or solving complex math problems. In fact, we know from research that children can actually do some amazingly rich and sophisticated mathematical problem solving at, at early ages. They only stop doing this great mathematical thinking when we train them to be answer seekers that follow procedures. Traditional math teaching emphasizes strict following of procedures, but Common Core promotes procedures together with understanding. There were several parents in attendance at the Stotsky event, and so it's important to take seriously the concerns of the parents. Uh, there was one parent who, has, uh, who had a fourth grade daughter struggling in mathematics, and this parent said, I don't know why you would ask thought-provoking questions on multiplication. Why can't they just teach them the multiplication? Doing things like multiplication is important, but it should not be mere doing. Thinking while you're doing is even more important, and it builds conceptual understanding, which Common Core supports. Common Core also wants students thinking and reasoning because these are the most useful aspects of their education in real life, especially given the fact that technology can do the computations much, much faster and more accurately than people can. For the sake of argument, however, let's say that a parent didn't want their child to be a thinker, but only wanted their child to be a doer, just do the multiplication. Even in this case, building a conceptual understanding of what you're doing actually helps you with recall and retention and the efficiency of that thing that you're doing. Moving on to the false criticisms of secondary math in the Common Core state standards, Dr. Stotsky reiterated several times that Common Core does not include algebra until ninth grade. Uh, if we look in grade eight Common Core, we see understanding connections between proportional relationships, lines, and linear equations. There's actually two standards for that. Analyzing and solving linear equations and uh, systems of linear equations. There's five standards on that. And then using functions to model relationships between quantities two standards on that. We can even go earlier to seventh grade using variables to represent quantities in real world 
uh, and mathematical problems, constructing simple equations and inequalities and solving them. Uh, Dr. Stotsky, it was actually pointed out to her that algebra is in included earlier than ninth grade, so she tried to backtrack and say, oh, well, Common Core doesn't complete algebra until ninth grade. Um, but you can actually go right to page 82 of the appendix, and you can see a specific plan for how students finish algebra before ninth grade. Dr. Stotsky distributed that handout from Milgram, and on the handout, it claimed that the following things were all missing from the Common Core math standards. Multi-step problems with linear equations and inequalities. Nope, that's in there. A couple different spots. Solving two linear inequalities in two variables and sketching the solution set. Nope, solving it's there. Sketching the graphs there, too. Properties of triangles and circles. Both there, of course. Combinations and permutations. There it is. You can go look it up. Dr. Stotsky also cited Milgram in saying that Common Core does not allow students to get to trigonometry and pre-calculus in high school, and so then they're not going to be ready for college. Well, yes, you can definitely get to trigonometry and pre-calculus through the Common Core math standards. Uh, you've got graphing rational functions, identifying zeros and asymptotes. You've got the unit circle. You've got radian measure and then extensions of the trig functions to all the real numbers. Um, you've got special triangles in the unit circle and we're using trigonometry on those. You've got the symmetry and periodicity of the functions. You've got trigonometric identities. Um, you've even got the addition and subtraction, kind of the more obscure trig identities. Now, it's true that some of these standards are marked as only necessary for STEM-bound students, but we can have students be college-ready. Not every student that goes to college starts Calculus 1 their first day when they get to college. A lot of them just need to be ready for college algebra or pre-calculus and things. Um, and even if Stotsky and Milgram didn't have these facts wrong, they still wouldn't have a valid critique because, as we said before, Common Core is setting minimum standards. So you could never say that Common Core doesn't allow a student to do something. So now the question becomes, how is Dr. Stotsky getting all of this stuff wrong? And why would people come to an actual event you know, to listen to her get all these things wrong? Maybe it's because of who she's putting her faith in for uh, mathematical advice because she said she's not an expert herself. So let's see who she is putting her faith in. With regard to all these criticisms of the Common Core math standards, this is her quote, and I'm going to read it verbatim. Quote, This is not just Professor Milgram's solo decision. As prestigious as he is, he is an internationally known research mathematician. Another mathematician named Marina Ratner from Berkeley wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal about two months ago. She was looking at what her sixth grade grandson was taking in the Berkeley Public Schools and was so upset that she wrote an op-ed, basically agreeing with everything that Milgram had pointed out. So it isn't just one mathematician's opinion. In fact, no mathematicians would disagree with it. The people who do disagree are people who are called mathematics educators. And these are people, usually in a school of education, who are not mathematicians, who do not teach math courses because the people who teach math courses are the mathematicians at most universities." Unquote. So Dr. Stotsky is clearly putting her faith in Milgram and Ratner, but before we follow her in putting our faith in those individuals with regard to K-12 school mathematics, let's actually take a closer look at their expertise. We admit that Milgram has had an illustrious and productive career in pure mathematics. But his professional work has involved him spending years and years, really decades, discovering new mathematical results and building theory. Here are some of his scholarly works representing the core of his professional expertise. By way of contrast, let's consider Jeremy Kilpatrick, who, like Milgram, was a member of the Common Core Validation Committee, but who, unlike Milgram, is a mathematics educator with decades of experience as a teacher and a scholar of education and curriculum. He studied student learning, math curriculum, and mathematics teaching across the world. Like Milgram, he has a connection to Stanford University. Jeremy Kilpatrick received his Ph.D. from Stanford in 1967. But unlike Milgram, 
he signed off on the Common Core State Standards for Mathematics, and he supports their implementation. Here are some of Jeremy Kilpatrick's research and scholarly works. Which person would you say is the expert on school math curriculum? Which would you expect to have the most insight into math teaching and learning from kindergarten through grade 12? Overall, it's absurd to disregard the expertise of mathematics educators, as Dr. Stotsky tries to do, because mathematics educators, both teachers and scholars, are precisely the people who've decided to dedicate their life's work to improving mathematics teaching and learning. It seems that Dr. Stotsky only disregards mathematics educators because, as a community, they overwhelmingly disagree with her opinions. And she seems to hold up Milgram and one other mathematician, Marina Ratner, because these are two individuals who happen to agree with her. Now, we have to admit there were a few valid concerns brought up at the Stotsky event. One was the overemphasis on testing, and another was that it might have been wiser to roll Common Core out in phases rather than all at once. These are legitimate points, but they are implementation issues, separate from the standards themselves. Instead of spreading misinformation, the anti-Common Core folks could direct their passion toward addressing these concerns and trying to improve and support the Common Core state standards as well as the students and teachers implementing them. Even Dr. Stotsky admitted that the Common Core math standards are probably better than what 90% of the states had, but she said it doesn't mean that Common Core standards are good. We agree that the Common Core math standards are an improvement over the vast majority of state standards they replaced. We say they are good in the sense that they are a step in the right direction of emphasizing understanding, problem solving, and reasoning.